I've had a few people here and there try to argue with me about capacitors being defective and uh, that all caps are basically the same formula and they only go bad because of heat and they're pretty much all equal aside from their ratings and their ESR and things like that. Um, I beg to differ. There are some known defective capacitors for more than one reason. The first type is the counterfeit type of defective capacitors where from what I understand there was an employee of a major capacitor manufacturer who left the company and tried to steal a formula didn't get it quite right but still sold the formula to a whole bunch of capacitor factories who mass produced a incorrect formula of capacitor electrolyte which when it heated up it produced hydrogen gas and caused the case to bulge and of course the caps dried out and went bad and it was a very very big problem uh, several years ago and still uh, even today you find some instances of those bad caps around like oh I've seen like Tipo capacitors, uh, Fujiu, um, just a lot of the generic ones but a lot of them are very common but anyway this is the second type of example where an otherwise good manufacturer had a defect in a particular series <clears throat> and um, this failure was not related to heat in any way this computer was built brand new and probably has less than 10 hours of use on it total. Uh, there's not a single speck of dust in it, and it wasn't built with cheap components. Um, but if you look right down there by the CPU, there are several capacitors in that row there that are bulging and leaking out the top. These are United Chemicon KZG series capacitors, which were known defective for a period of time. And otherwise, United Chemicon is a good, reputable company when it comes to caps. In fact, I still use them in a lot of my new repairs, especially the KY series, uh, the KZE series, and the KMG series. But the KZG was known to be bad and problematic. I wish I could get a better shot. Yeah, there you go, through the vents. Very bad condition. And... Uh, the system has never gotten hot, in fact it's never even really gotten warm. Only been powered on for maybe a couple hours at a time for a few times here and there and otherwise it has just sat. So it's very possible that a lot of this bulging has been going on while it has been doing nothing. Anyway, sorry for the long rant, I'm just trying to make a point that there are defective types of caps and I've seen lots of them over the past few years and when it comes to the counterfeit type defective ones like the Tipo and, and the Fuju with the, with the bad formula, I have replaced probably thousands and thousands and thousands of them and uh, any of you who are interested maybe I'll bring home the very large bin of capacitors that I replaced that came almost exclusively from ECS motherboards that was used in the equipment that I work with. Um, I mean, I'm talking a giant, probably 12-inch square box, and that was just a, a small fraction of the ones I changed. I threw most of them away, but I started collecting them just to see how many would amass over the years, and uh, boy, it was a surprise. Um, this motherboard, if anybody's wondering, it's been a long time since I built this, but I want to say this is a... A Biostar motherboard, GeForce 6100-M9, and uh, it's got an Athlon 64, 3500+, I think, and two gigs of of uh, that crappy cheap high-density RAM. I'm going to recap this board and probably use it for something else, like an office computer. It's not good for much else anymore. I actually custom built this. Uh, for use in my theater organ project. Uh, you guys probably don't remember, some of you are new, but under all that junk over there is my theater organ console. And uh, this, that computer was used in this console to provide all the sound. <clears throat> but it's no longer in there because I stopped working on that project years ago and happened to look inside this computer and see the capacitor problem so it's not going to be going back together anytime soon if ever and uh, I'm just going to probably part this out use it for something else 
Oh, what else was I going to talk about? I guess that was pretty much it. I just wanted to give a, a prime example of known defective capacitors really was the whole point of this over five minute long video. So maybe I'll talk more about it in the future and show you some more examples. Um, but in the meantime, I've got other things coming up. Uh, some more computer stuff, some more audio stuff, and maybe some repair. We'll have to see. Well, I was going to upload that video as is, uh, but I figured it would be a little incomplete without a couple examples of the other type of bad caps, which was the counterfeit formula ones. Here's one example. This is an old AT motherboard with a K62 processor on it. This has Choyo branded capacitors that have bulged and leaked out the top. And, uh, I'm assuming this motherboard no longer works, but it may work if I recap it. It's not even really worth it though. It's a, you know, just an old socket 7 board with PC100 memory sockets. Oddly enough, it's still got the case brackets and everything attached. Um, this is another example of bad United Chemicon KZG capacitors. Let's see if I can get a better picture here. I should have used a macro mode on my camera. In fact, I think I'm going to switch over real quick. Okay, maybe now I can get a little closer and still maintain focus. The glare from the, uh, the light is making it difficult. But you can tell that these are bulged up and leaking. Bad capacitors don't always bulge either. A lot of times they just go up in val or they, you know, go down in capacitance and go up in ESR, or they just plain go open altogether. Another example here of the cheap capacitors, uh, as well as heat, to some degree, are these Skywell branded caps on this video card. Same deal. They're bulged on top and. A couple of them are leaking their crusty stuff out. Darn, I really wish I could get uh, better lighting in here to, <laughs> with so much glare. Um, it's not really coming out on camera very well. But they're toasted. And uh, here's a closer look at the Choyo caps on the AT motherboard. Yeah, well, back then, almost all, the caps on almost all the motherboards were, at least on the consumer motherboards, were always electrolytic capacitors. Nowadays, even the cheaper motherboards have solid state capacitors in the CPU voltage regulator circuit and sometimes have electrolytics on the non critical stuff uh, on other areas of the motherboard. But, you know, years ago, there was. The only market for solid state caps was more in servers and in commercial grade stuff. There is one good capacitor on this video card, ironically, and it's a Sanyo Ascon cap, which is one of the best ones you could get around that period. In fact, um, a lot of my HP servers that are running in my main server rack are full of these caps. And uh, of course, they're still going strong. But uh, yeah, like I said, just a few minute talk about bad capacitors and a couple different types. I know there's a lot more to talk about and a lot more detail that could be gone into, but I only have so much time and so many examples. Here's another brand I don't really particularly care for, even though it's very common with these G Luxon capacitors. Uh, these will run for a few years if you keep them cool, but they're still what I would consider a cheap and crappy capacitor. Um, ironically, they outlasted the United Chemicon ones, but then again, they're on the lower stress portion of the motherboard. The CPU voltage regulator is much higher frequency, much higher current, uh, so it's a lot of stress on the caps. So, there you have it. Well, I know I said twice that I was done, but I guess the third time is the charm. I wanted to say a couple words about another example. This is a motherboard that was in one of my own systems and was very well taken care of. None of these caps are bulging at all, but these are two, two uh, reputable brands with defective series on one board. 
You got the United Chemicon KZG right here and the Nichicon HM right here. Uh, both normally good caps, like I said. In fact, the HM and their sister series, the HN, are still in use to this day, and the problem has since been corrected. And in fact, I use the HM and HN on some of my repairs, even today. But uh, a few years back, there was a bad batch of those, and I think it was because they overfilled the electrolyte a little bit, and when they heated up, they expanded and, and bulged the tops out. Uh, one set of computers that was very affected by those was Dell and uh, in fact I have a few systems around here that have bad Nichicon HM and HN capacitors um, <clears throat> but yeah like I said that's since been fixed and uh, funny they got some Rubicon capacitors here those are one of my favorite ones to use if you can even find them anymore I think uh, they're getting quite obscure and that's another thing. I've had Rubicon caps like these. Uh, you might remember back on those HP motherboard recap videos I did where there was a row of Rubicon caps next to the processor that had, had all bulged up and failed. That is a good example of overly stressing and overheating some capacitors to make them fail. So, anyway, uh, for the last time, let's put this video together and get it uploaded.